this is a important update actually important and not so important but this is courtesy of the joe Biden podcast subreddit so someone posted a screenshot from this lady called i Heart miko who i'm not if i'm not uh, mistaken is the wife of a very prominent nfl player if not former again not americans so i have no idea what goes on there but she's very clued in and locked into the whole like new york um podcasting and comedy and entertainment scene knows a lot of the people in the jbp um podcast of course and loads of other people on the brilliant idiot side of things um in terms of Schultz and charlemagne so she's clued up on what's going on and she posted this um on her story which is the following and it says um this is a screenshot from her instagram page and it says fyi this is from the town magazine and it says um the caption uh, above a underneath a picture of marl and rory says well, hashtag one in the town is that the real reason marl and rory left and dot 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 and then miko added on her post i heard this as well more on the, uh, i heard this and more as well so this is basically coming from the horse's mouth somebody directly tied in with that whole camp who's now talking um openly about the issues that have basically been occurring behind the scenes and i think for a lot of people who have invested in this flipping stupid podcast drama that really we shouldn't be caring about what we are caring about because we all have nothing better to do um this is basically uh confirming a lot of the suspicions that a lot of us had you know behind the scenes or not well, a lot of us had away from the show where we kind of speak about stuff you know whether it's a discord or reddit or maybe everyone's kind of been having the same idea where we basically surmise that it's definitely about money but of course the dudes on the podcast are telling you no it's not especially joe specifically joe and i think parks as well he mentioned a few times that it's definitely not the money thing but we know from you know whatever else we've seen in the media space when it comes to disagreements in the camp it's usually always about money especially when it can involve friends there's no other thing that will really drive somebody to you know to take a leave of absence or go and strike if it wasn't something to do with some sort of monetary thing so anyway the post itself from this instagram page called the town said the following word in town is that the real reason marlon roy left of joe Bond podcast was because they asked to see the finances and of the show and Joe Biden refused, stating that it was his show and not theirs, which caused a deep rift between the co-hosts. Adding to the drama, Joe told Rory it was best if he took time off on the show, which caused some crew members, um, which uh, what's that? Which caused the, took take of some show from the show, which some crew members saw as Rory getting suspended from the popular podcast. Trouble has been brewing since last year when Biden decided to leave a multi-billion, multi-million billion, they wish multi-million dollar Spotify deal on the table to go independent. Sources close to more than Rory say the duo have been getting offers to start their own podcast since leaving the show. Stay tuned as we update the story. Hashtag the town. So very very interesting, right? And maybe a clear indication if ever there was one that it's probably over for them um, and i only say this because of my small experience i've had with doing business with friends and how that can go very south very quickly when money is involved and there's not a clear line of communication and you have different goals and objectives and what you want to do it's very difficult to kind of get that back especially as well to be added to it so when kind of there's a lot of time that passes in between you got talking as, as often and other people then get involved and kind of talk into your ear and distract the person and kind of feed them a false narrative or make it seem like you're doing something whatever it may be it, 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 it could just drive a wedge that sort of time that silence those gaps in between time can drive a wedge and basically make it to a point where there is no option or no chance of things being reconciled and being brought back to a place where you can work back together again it's very difficult to do so because part of the reason why and part of the joy of working with friends is that you're that your friends and that you're in business with right the moment it turns into um just a job and just an occupation the magic that kind of existed prior basically goes now don't get me wrong the magic doesn't stay forever right that little stardust that kind of is sprinkled on this show because they're all very good close friends and they know intimate details about each other can only go so far but it's still there it's still you know maybe it starts off at like 100 percent of that friendship stardust and then as time goes on it kind of diminishes little by little but you still have a, some bits on there so maybe by now it may be 20 10 percent, but it's still enough to basically differentiate their show from many others that's, that's why i think people need to realize too um what they were doing wasn't that unique but what made it unique was the chemistry between the three of them right um even the four of them when you include parks or the other people with some that aren't even on the mic at all right and then once you 
kind of that magic is gone and they're just there because they want to get a check and they don't you know they do that thing of um who's that NF nba player that turned up at the press conference is like oh i'm only here so i don't get fined right and um, when it turns to that sort of thing it's gone and you might as well just call it quits and move your separate ways but the i guess the only frustrating part about this if you're a fan is that they kept insisting that it wasn't about money right and they kept telling us that they were going to be transparent about the issues without being transparent every show that i've watched so far i've, I've missed the last two don't get me wrong but the, the last one i watched from then it was basically joe doing a lot of semantics and talking in riddles and going around things which i understand right you don't want to put someone else's business out there but there should be an acknowledgement that there's you know they've prided their entire show on being you know open oh no say up they've kind of built a show complete they've kind of built a show off the back of dissecting a lot of deals that happen within industry hip-hop and stuff and in the moment it comes to them and it's sort of the light is shown the light is sort of pointed in their direction they kind of you know push back from divulging too many details because they're afraid of how it might make them look which again isn't very much isn't um isn't the best thing for fans when it comes to kind of getting clarity into what's going on but from what we can read between the lines and you know the little sub tweets that mal has been sending out and posts from Roy like Malarkey and the tension that obviously existed prior to them breaking up it was clear from day that it was definitely a money issue there was no other thing that would be now whether or not the details that we have we've been kind of rumored the kind of speaking about are true is another thing um I'm still not very I'm still not sold on the idea that it was what Spotify thing. I think even at the time, if you remember, a lot of the guys when they were discussing the Spotify deal and how negotiation broke down, a lot of them were happy with the fact that Joe didn't take that deal. I think they didn't really think it was worth it, right? It didn't really value them correctly. If you believe the numbers, 30 million for everything that Joe Budden podcast network owns and operates with, right? Their entire intellectual property, whatever it may be, um, all the shows that he did under that umbrella um, for however long, was it five years? I don't know, whatever long it much was, right? But it didn't work. The numbers didn't make sense at that time. And there was still a possibility that they were going to go on tour. I think that was around the same time they were about to announce a big tour. This was just before COVID, maybe a year before covid i forgot when it was but i do remember that show and there was a lot of if i remember correctly they were very uh they, they all were in agreement that this was probably the wrong move to make at that time definitely for sure at that time so you there's to come to sort of circle back now in a you know in a in a you know in a sort of post-covid world and regret that he didn't take that deal is a little bit armchair you know quarterbacks or revisionist history so that wasn't that wouldn't be fair on joe in that regard but for sure maybe since then in terms of clear communications of how the business is being conducted um what deals are on the table that whole conversation that joe had with um swiss beats on the phone or was it swiss beats or one of them where he basically sort of said in a jokey non-jokey way that he had a call with Triller. they said name his price and he hung up the phone i'm not sure if that actually happened or if he's just kind of exaggerating to make it a funny story and then seeing how you know rory's face was obviously we know you know from what we know so far with rory he's going through whatever he's going through at home stresses in that regard you know his earning potential has been kind of i'd assumed really affected due to covid no live shows the the acts that he manages or the music consultation stuff is probably dried up Miles is probably doing the same sort of thing i don't know what he does in terms of running around with basketball players and stuff but i'm sure whatever he was doing consulting managing just being somebody that's got the ears to the street that's been affected too so for sure that could bring some strains and then when you start asking questions and you're not getting the right answers in terms of looking at the financial so you can maybe spec out and plan your finances and see where you need to make some sacrifices where you might need to do a little bit of a move I can get why that can definitely splinter the group and get it to the point where it's at now. The only problem I have with the whole this, this entire thing is how surprising it is to learn that Joe basically refers to the podcast as his. He doesn't really treat it as something that he owns in partnership with his friends, which is bizarre when you think that the whole appeal of the show isn't just for Joe, it's for the dynamic that he has with everybody else because we got to know him singularly 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 whoever that word is um via his own career in hip-hop and obviously via his own little stints in reality tv um and then we got to see how crazy and you know uh, you know off kilter he was and then a lot of people would always wonder in it how does this guy have friends that's what i would think uh, that's how i kind of came to be a fan of the show and then you kind of see him on the show with, the, with these other guys who have known him for 10 plus years like oh okay this is how his friends manage him and he's the same and it kind of brought out a I kind of he kind of brought him in a better light let's say that um so to suggest that 
the podcast only centers around him is really insane but also in that respect why did the guys allow it to go this far where it was unknown or it was not clear who owned the actual show itself that's the only thing that i'm really questioning why were they under the impression that they had partnership and when they didn't and um why did why didn't joe make it maybe super clear that they were his employees i still don't agree with it i think it's super scummy like i mentioned a few other times i think there is accounts of um it's very it's kind of like an open secret within a startup world that Mark Zuckerberg isn't the nicest of humans in the world, right? But he still found a way to make sure that he gave the early employees of Facebook, maybe it was the only way he could do it because he could actually pay them with money, but they all, all own shares, right, of the, of the company. And I think if you remember correctly, David Cho, is that his name? The street artist, he was um, commissioned to do a mural inside one of the original Facebook offices and they couldn't pay him, so they gave him shares in the company. And of course, then when they went to IPO, he cashed out you know for, to the tens of millions so he was able to do that with his employees and people that just painted the wall so for joe not be able to kind of break off his friends and give them a portion of the network of the show and have them involved in the negotiation process it's just really bizarre i don't really see how that makes any sense i never really understood um the reason or the need to change the name as well of the show from our name this podcast later to joe brother podcast i've always thought that was strange and then for it to then go to be in a thing where all the negotiations for the show and all for sponsorships and whatnot and brand deals are always done via ian and which is who happened to be joe's manager was really odd to why the other lawyers for the other dudes or business managers weren't involved in those conversations too was very bizarre maybe it would be a bit too many chefs in the kitchen but why they weren't involved in that conversation and why it always felt like they were learning about deals and negotiations on the show itself it just came seemed a bit odd but if if i would hazard a guess i would say it's pretty much over for the jb for the Joe Biden podcast for now with the, with that original crew he's probably going to have to evolve it which he has already has with the introduction of Ice and Ish and from what I've seen so far in the comments and the dislike bars and so people are seeming to enjoy it little by little obviously it will naturally come to an end the same way it did with these guys because if Joe can fall out with these dudes he can fall out with anybody as he's proved over the course of his career but it'll be interesting to see it, how this kind of falls and pans out going forward um, there's rumours of supposedly of course as I mentioned in the article um, Rory and Moore having their own show I'm not too sure how interested I will be in that to be honest same way I'm not that interested in Joe's show on his own I quite like the dynamic as a free we'll see in it how this show how it kind of pans out for the future but let me know what you think in the comments down below do you reckon there is a future still for Rory Amal on the show or do you think it's done and do you think Joe Budden is out of order for not giving his friends a bit of the network itself or is this just a standard business deal let me know in the comments down below